Aren't these candles so cute? These little gingerbread candles? Hi, I'm Jess from Six Spice, and I'm going to show you my whole process today, how to go start from finish to make your own soy wax votive candles. One of the first things that you need to do is prepare your work area. So have a large flat surface that you can cover with newsprint. I'm going to cover it with newsprint and then I'm going to start preparing my candles. Put an apron on to protect your clothing from any spills. You can see here it does happen. Now that your workspace is ready, you need to look at your glassware and choose the ones you're going to use. Now when they come in boxes, they often come just like this in this flimsy box. So you need to check the outside glasses very carefully for any cracks or anything like that. Once you've brought your glassware over to where you're working, you need to inspect it. Really look for any cracks and discrepancies in the glass. If there's anything, it can shatter later on when the candle's burning. Especially because the manufacturers of the glass, when they send, when you send it and you buy it wholesale, they're often not packaged well. And you really need to make sure that all the rims are smooth, the bottoms don't have any cracks in them. Check the sides for any hairline fractures or anything like that. So it's really important you inspect your glass thoroughly. When I'm doing a large batch of candles for an order, I like to kind of line them up like this in an assembly type line and so that I can get my, my prep done in an efficient manner quickly in as quick as way as possible. What I do next is I take my roll of warning labels. They're just a generic label that you can get from a supplier. You can see that that has the warning and the burning instructions. Um, one of the only requirements in Australia for candles is that they have this warning label on the bottom of them. So it's really important that you add a warning label to your products. Now you can get these custom made with your brand name and your website and the scent on the bottom if you want to. But mine will have it on the side of the candle, a label afterwards. So I'm just going to pop these on the bottom right now. The next step is I'm going to take my wick tabs, my, my wick stickums, and I'm going to stick them to the bottom of my wick tabs and then put them into the middle of the bottom of the candle. Now I'll tell you what I use for my votives, but what you choose to use for your candles is going to differ between supplier and it's very important that you test your own supplies for the candles yourself. So this is an ACS 3.0 sized wick. It's a cotton braid wick and all you do is you take the wick tab and you put the stickum onto the bottom, push it on firmly, peel off, and place it into the center of your container. And then I just use my fingertips because these candles are small enough that I can fit in there and place them in. Now this one isn't sticking, so what I will do is I will get some alcohol, rub it into the bottom, and then try again. When I say alcohol, I just mean like rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. I just have some in a little spray bottle here. And I'm going to just spray into the bottom like that. Take a clean paper towel and wipe it out. Just to get any residue that's in there because usually the wick stickums stick perfectly to the bottom. That's not usually a problem that I have. So I'll just do the same thing again. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to get a fresh one. And stick it to the bottom and see it sticks now. There are a few different ways that you can center your wick 
you'll definitely want to use something to hold it into the middle while you're pouring your wax. Now you could use a skewer stick and you could wrap it around the wick like this. Pulling it tight between your fingers so it stays centered. You can do it this way. There's nothing wrong with this. I'll show you another way you can use it. Um, there's some, another way that you could do it is you can get these wooden popsicle sticks with a hole in the center, or you could make your own if you have a, a tool that you could drill in there. I personally use these metal wick centering, and I'll show you how. Now to use the wooden popsicle stick with the hole in the center, it's simply threading the wick through the middle there and then placing it down on your surface so that it stays still and holds the wick centered. To use the metal wick tab, it's the same thing. You can do it up so that the, the little wings are facing up or you can put it so they're facing down. I like to use it with the wings facing down to kind of use gravity to help because the weight is distributing downward. So I use the gravity and the weight of the metal tab to kind of hold it in place a bit more. You, How I do it is I just use my fingers to hold it and then pull the, the wick tight, but not too hard to pull off the the wick tab off the bottom you don't want to pull the sticky off but I just pull it tight and then pull it down so that it it hooks into the little tab there and then when you put it downwards it has a bit of tension on the wick and holds it nicely centered The next step is to take your pouring jug and measure out the wax that you need to use. So I like to use a universal additive in my wax, which comes in these bags like this. And what it is, is it's just a very fine white powder. Pour it into here so you can see. It's just a very fine white powder that helps with glass adhesion and frosting and to harden the wax up a bit, which is really great for when you live in a hot climate and you have to ship things. I'm using Golden Wax 444. And it comes in these big boxes. I just use an empty container, an empty plastic container to help me measure it. Here's my scale with my jug on it, and I'm just gonna weigh out a kilo of wax. So with universal additive here, it says the usage is 0.01 to 1%. I always like to use it at 1% when I'm doing it. So I've just got it in a little container here and I've got 1000 grams of wax in there and I'm just gonna add 1%, which is 10 grams. There's a bit more there. That's okay. All it's gonna do is just make the wax harder. Take my jug to the kitchen and put it on my stove. And I put it on a low setting and I let it melt. I've got my wooden spoon that I use, you can see it has dye all over it, ready to stir as we go and I'll get my scent measured out now. All right, welcome to my scent cupboard. Let's find gingerbread. It's up here. There we go. All right, I got my scale on. I have a little plastic measuring cup and I like to use 7% fragrance load for my candles. So when I have a thousand grams of soy wax, I'm gonna use 7%, which is 70 grams of fragrance oil. So I just weigh it out. Approximately now. I wouldn't pour this back in to get exactly 70 grams. 
a little bit doesn't really matter. It's just going to, it's not really going to make that much of a difference in the long run. So I'm just going to shut this off now. And then when this is melted, I'll pour it in there and we'll be back when it's ready. Waiting for my wax to melt. I'm just going to put my supplies away. So I put my candle. I've got this drawer right here for um, my candle dyes and my stickums. And I have different equipment that goes in here. These plastic drawers are a great way to keep yourself organized while you're doing all your... See, I've got lots of things in here. All organized, so when I want something, I just grab it. Now that my wax is all melted, and you can see in my thermometer here that it's about just over 80 degrees. So it's perfect time now to add my dye and my fragrance. So the first thing that I do is add my dye. I like to cut off a little piece of paper towel like this when I open my dye bottles just so that I don't get it all over my fingers because it's really messy. And I add 10 drops of brown liquid candle dye per 1,000 grams of wax. You shut this. So I add my dye and then I add my fragrance because you'll see how the fragrance helps the color disperse throughout the wax. Like that. Just a little tip. Give it a good stir. Check the temperature. Perfect. So now I'm just going to stir it for a few minutes and pour it into my jars. When your candles have cooled down and hardened, what you can do is you can just remove the wick tabs like this, pull that off, take a pair of wick scissors, and snip off the excess and save the extra wick because it becomes in very handy for other projects. Now if you get a candle like this that has a bit of a hole right here, um, what you can do is you can just take a heat gun and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm here, I've got my heat gun. This is just a small embossing gun. I like the precision tip on it rather than a large one. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, use the heat gun to melt the top layer of wax to fill in that hole right there so that it just looks all pretty again. The very last steps is just, I like to add a little bit of biodegradable eco glitter to the tops of my Christmas candles just to give them a little bit of flash. Careful adding um, things to the top, you want to make sure that they don't light on fire and burn. And of course we need our label. I like to use this label as an opportunity to look at my glassware and where did the adhesion not go too well or any discolorations. I just cover that up like that. Yeah, we have made gingerbread candles. I hope you had fun making these with me. And if you like this video and you found it helpful, please hit the little like button and yeah, I do lots of these types of videos, so if there's something in particular you want to see, let me know in the comments, and I'll make one. Have a great night or day, wherever you are. Bye.